second session of your business administration course. So I'm Michaela and I'm your tutor. You should have heard my voice already and you should have already seen a video with my face on. So you're not going to see me today on the video, um, but I obviously am online. Um, so let's just get started. So your chapter today is called the organisation and that's the piece of work we're going to be doing. So we're going to look at business admin um, and in terms of the organisation and sort of what the organisation does there. Okay. So your aims and objectives of the session. Um, we're going to look at customer service and say how that's provided in an office environment. And we're going to look at professionalism as well. Okay. So for your first sort of task relating to this, what we're going to do is just, I want you to just, just, just think about what does customer service mean okay so in the classroom what we would normally do is an activity on this um, but because we're not sort of in a classroom setting uh, it's just a little bit different but I just want you to have a think for a moment there what does customer service mean to you and I want you to think about how that can relate to some sort of office environment. Maybe you're thinking of a small office, maybe you're thinking of like a, a much larger office, maybe sort of more call centre side, maybe you're thinking about hospitals or airports or much larger organisations there. So just have a think, what does customer service mean? So customer service, um, there are lots and lots of different definitions out there for customer service. Um, we're just going to have a look at a couple here. So the assistance and advice provided by a company to those people who buy or use its products or services. And customer service is the act of taking care of the customer's needs by providing and delivering professional, helpful, high quality service. So let's just think about this in terms of an office environment. So if we were thinking about this in terms of business administration, the assistance and advice provided by a company to people who buy or use its products or services. So for that definition there, you can think about you are assisting somebody as an administration assistant. You may be giving advice over the phone as well. You are going to be representing a company and the customers, the people who buy or use its products or services are those people that you're going to be speaking to there. So it could be that you are selling things and um, you could be doing administration for sort of sales side of things or you could be providing a service. OK, so it could be, I don't know, uh, parts for cars that you are perhaps selling over the phone and keeping a log off administration wise or it could be services such as um, I don't know, internet services, um, IT technicians, that kind of thing. And the next one down there, so customer service is the act of taking care of customer needs. So that's no matter where you're working by providing and delivering professional, helpful, high quality service. And I think when you're working in business admin, no matter what kind of business you are working in, they are going to be expecting you to be professional, to be helpful and to, to provide a high quality service. So for your first question there, what I would like you to do is to state a definition of customer service, followed by stating why good customer service is important when working in an office. So please don't forget that you need to write in sentences. So when we're thinking about stating, you need to remember that when you are stating, you are writing a statement, okay? Um, the first part of your question is a definition of customer service. So what you can do for that part is you can use the information from the slide pre previous to this one. Um, you can also sort of think of your own a bit as well. What does customer service mean? And then Then for the second part of the question, what I would like you to do for that part is to think about when have you had a good or bad experience, okay, in terms of customer service. It doesn't have to be right now in this moment. It could be 10 months ago. It could be 10 years ago. Something that sticks in your mind. An example of good or bad customer service. 
So I'll share a bit of poor customer service that I had. I do find that when we go around the classroom and ask these questions, generally speaking, it is poor customer service that people tend to remember more so than positive customer service. So I was with Eon for my electricity and my gas. I moved into the house in July. Um, we got our first bill in September, so three months later, over summer, uh, and it was over £800. So it was absolutely ridiculous. The call centre staff absolutely refused to acknowledge that this was extortionate for the time frame given. They said that they cannot judge people how they use their gas and their electric. I phoned, I phoned, I phoned. I got absolutely nowhere. There was no no listening to me. I managed to somehow get it through to a manager, okay? It took a lot of phone calls to get to this point. Um, it was really, really frustrating for me and the manager even agreed that it should have been dealt with sooner because the bill was for a two and a half month period and £800 is about a year's worth of gas and electric. So. It turned out that the money was owed by the previous tenant of that house, but it took three months to resolve. So, you know, it was like multiple phone calls throughout the week and it just took a lot of my time. So when I moved into my current house here, it was actually going to be cheaper to go with Eon. But I just refused. I thought, no, I've had a really bad experience with you and you've just completely put me off. I'd rather pay an extra tenner or something a year because I just value my time. I don't want to spend that amount of time and aggravation it was in trying to get that solved. It was so frustrating. And I'm sure some of you can appreciate that from perhaps some experiences that you've got as well there. So this kind of moves on to your second part of your question. Why is customer service important to every organisation, including an office? It absolutely is so, so important in an office environment. So the person I spoke to at Eon, yes, she was in a call centre, but call centres, business administration, there is sort of a line that they do cross over quite a lot. There's a lot of comparisons there. Customers will always recommend good service to their family and friends. They will also always tell of bad experiences. OK. Um, we're really, really quick to share those bad experiences. And that's where it's bad for the, co the company's rep reputations. Um, customers will also appreciate a good level of service. So they're going to return. They're going to use your company's products and services. They're going to buy from you again. So they'll recommend. They'll give good reviews. They'll appreciate it and they'll keep coming back. They're going to be a returning customer. If you're not very good, they're not going to be. OK, so that's going to give you the second part of question one there. So the second part of question one, why good customer service is important when working in an office. Um, and that part is there for you to write now. Just remember that you need to write it in sentences. OK. OK, so the next slide is about personal presentation at work, and I would like you to do a bit of an activity. OK, so we've got some questions on here and I want you to do some research and make some notes on both males and females. OK, so this relates to question two. I want you to think about the following questions. So what are the clothing requirements of an office assistant? What jewellery can an office assistant wear? And what should they avoid in terms of jewellery and why? What hairstyles are suitable for office work and what should be avoided? What makeup is suitable for wearing in an office? What about headwear? Can an office assistant wear a hat? When they're working in an office, do they need to wear anything in particular to make them identifiable as a member of staff? So I'd like you to sort of think about those. So I want you to do a bit of research for that on your own. Um, I'll move on to the next slide now, but if you can pause here so you've got time to research. So that'll lead you on to that next question. 
okay? So your question is, state the standards of personal presentation expected of staff working in an office environment. Again, you need to use sentences in the answer. So you're going to create a statement, two to three sentences there, roughly. And for this question, don't just think about clothing, okay? I want you to think about the, the wider picture here. I want you to think about what not to wear. I want you to think about those hairstyles, jewellery, makeup, footwear, all of those things. And you should have done some research prior to this, which should generate the answers for that question. Okay. So how do office receptionists provide customer service? So think about it. When you're working in an office environment, how will that office receptionist provide customer service? And this will help for question three. So in an office environment, in a reception area, the receptionist could be meeting and greeting customers. They could be asking customers to sign in. They could be asking them questions. They could be taking ID. They could be answering phone calls at the desk as well. But how do different organisations compare? So this question is a little bit of a comparison for you. So what about hairdressers? How do they provide customer service? What about shops or cinema workers or people that work in the post office? How do they provide customer service? So if you think about hairdressers, um, they should be asking customers what cut or colour they want, what style they would like the hair to look like. Um, they might make a bit of small talk. So are you going on holiday is the typical one. Um, they are going to take payment at the end as well. Shops. Shops are greeting customers, maybe showing customers where the items are, um, taking payments again, rotating that stock as well. Cinema workers. So at the cinema, um, they could inform customers of the film times, uh, sell popcorn, tickets, drinks. Uh, they direct customers to their screens as well, and sometimes to their seats if it's a little bit upper end. Don't get that often nowadays, do we? Uh, they clean the seats and aisles after each film because we don't want to be sat on each other's popcorn bits, do we? At the post office, the post office do loads. We don't even realise how much they do. So they obviously do postage, that's the main one, but they also do things like banking and savings accounts and holiday insurance, uh, passport checks, driving licence forms. They do so many different things there. They really, really do. So your question three says, identify the different ways in which organisations provide customer service. So for this question, like I said before, you are comparing how an office receptionist works with a customer service work. In comparison to other organisations, so because it's identify, what you can do is introduce your topic and give the main points. So I've got some examples here. So um, I've put zoo just to mix it up a little bit. So customer service in a zoo is provided by meeting customers, answering their questions, selling tickets, informing them of when the animal interactive sessions are and providing directions. So similarly, you could use the part that I've put in bold, but obviously change the word zoo. So customer service in a shop is provided by customer service in a cinema is provided by etc, etc. So this will lead on to question four here. So um, this part here is about a service offer and a mission statement. So we're going to have a look at some examples of mission statements from organisations that work within Greater Manchester. So the first one here, you can have a click of this on your screen. This one is the Greater Manchester NHS Foundation Trust, the Manchester University Foundation Trust. Uh, their website has got a huge, huge values page. on. The next one here is from Office Depot. So you can pause this screen here and have a read of this. They've got a mission statement, they've got a vision statement, they've got a value statement, okay? 
after their mission, their vision, their values. And the last one here is Manchester Airport. So we've got a mission and their values. Again, you can pause this page here if you wish, if you wish to read the full thing. Um, you can see there they've just got their mission part on the bit that I have put on the screen. It is slightly larger if you go on their full website, but you can see the words mission and vision at the bottom there as well. So mission statements, okay, so all companies have mission statements. I've not just picked three out from sort of looking and looking online. If you were to Google a company name and their mission statement or their vision statement or their value statement, they will all have something on there. So their mission statements, what are they? Um, mission statements are the values and commitments to the customers. So they are underpinning what they are promising to their customers. So in customer service, um, I think in your work booklet, it states service offer, but mission statement service offer, it's more or less the same thing. So the purpose of a mission statement is to outline the promises the business is committed to. And the mission statement shows the customers what the business's values and focuses are. So what we kind of find is that sometimes people get a little bit stuck on this question. Um, mission statements, um, although they are everywhere, every business will have one, they're not very well sort of known, okay? In terms of why you need to know it, if you were going to an interview and they said, what do you know about the company? And if you could remember a few words from their mission statement, that will look really, really good on you. In terms of your answer here, the words that I've put in yellow are the points that I would like you to try and get across when you are structuring your question. So your question here, what is meant by a service offer? I've put in brackets their mission statement for you. And refer back to that slide, okay? Rewind this video, go back to the slide so that you've got those points there and remember to focus on those points in yellow. So where else could we find information about a business? So we've looked at those mission statements. We know that they're found on the company's websites, but where else could we find information on a company? In a classroom, I find that most people shout out, you can go online. Yes, you can go online, but online is too generic. It doesn't make any sense. We don't know where we're going online. Are we going to just Google? Are we going to Yahoo, MSN? We don't know where we're going. So we need to be more specific, okay? And this is what we're looking for for question five. So where could you find out additional information about the company? So the company will have a website. You could ask the staff at the company, so you could ring them up and ask them questions. You could ask a customer, so perhaps your brother or your sister or your daughter or your mother has been there before. You may be able to get hold of some sort of flyer or a leaflet or a brochure. Uh, you may be walking or driving down the street when we're allowed out again and see a billboard with some information on. You could visit the company. So this question here, identify four sources of information on a company's products and services. I want you to think about marketing, okay? So how do they promote their businesses? So I've given you some examples on that previous slide. Now, as you are identifying, you need to introduce the topic and then give the main points. So you need to write a sentence and then the four sources that you've found. So for example, you can start it by using your question. So four different sources of information on a company's products and services are, and then tell me about the ones you've found out. If you'd like to do this as a case study, you can do it that way as well, where you focus on a particular business that you're perhaps interested in working for. That would be a great task for you to do in terms of your own sort of ability to know about that company. So going on to question six here, why do staff at a company need to know about the organisation's mission statement? Why do they need to know about the policies and procedures? Why do they need to know their company's details, like their address and locations? Why do the staff need to know about the day-to-day -day running of the business? 
and why do staff need to know who to report to? So that first one there, mission statement, you may be thinking, why on earth do I need to know the mission statement? Uh, when I worked in, in a college, part of our Ofsted requirement was to know the mission statement. And we were quite lucky because it was printed on the back of our uh, name tags, lanyards. So that was quite handy, um, but we were expected to know that. So how that would work in other organisations, I'm not entirely sure. But you, you should know what your company's values and vision are, because that's what you're promising the customers. The policies and procedures, why do staff need to know about those? Well, we can't just make our own rules up, can we, at work? <laughs> um, we've got to obviously follow those policies and procedures. They're put in place because of things like laws as well. You need to know about the company's details. So you need to know the phone number. You need to know the address. Maybe there's another location somewhere. Uh, maybe you need to guide somebody to that. You need to sort of know the basics about the company you're working for and that leads us on to the next section really the day-to-day -day running of the business if you don't know anything about the company you're working for then why on earth are they paying you you need to know the running of the business so that you can make it profitable and able to run and what about who to report to so why do we need to know who to report to so we looked at this in question one on your last part of your work, who to report to, why is it important? Quite simply, if you didn't know the answer to something, if you're struggling, if you're falling behind on your workload, if you've got a problem, if you want to call in sick, if you're poorly, any of those reasons or many more, you need to speak to your line manager. You need to know who you're reporting to so these situations can be solved. So there we go. So staff need to know about the organisation's mission statement, policies and procedures, the company's details, the day to day running and who to report to. And I've put a few more sort of summaries on there for you as well to help you out. So you can have a pause of that or rewind. And if staff do know those answers, they'll be able to answer questions and queries. They'll be given a positive impression of the business. Uh, you might get returning customers because they'll have a great experience. You might sell some products or services and you might make money. So the business will thrive and your job is safe. Whereas if we don't know, all of those turn into negatives. So you'll be unable to answer questions and queries. You'll give a negative impression. Customers won't return. You might not sell anything. You may lose money. You may have to close down and you may lose your job. I'm talking worst case scenario here, um, but we do need to understand the running of a business in order to work in it. So your question there is explain why staff working in an office need to know and understand about the service they are providing to the customers. OK, so when you're explaining, you have to write in a paragraph. So I'm looking for a good three to four sentences here. But I also need the reasons behind your answer. So which is why I included those slides on what will happen if they do know and what will happen if they don't know. OK. So you can use those examples from the past slides. Uh, you can develop those into your own answers. So question seven, this is your last question, I think. So why is professionalism important when you work in an office? So why does it matter if we are professional or not in an office? So it's important when you work in an office because the customers expect you to have a professional knowledge, including those policies, those procedures. If you behave in a way that's not professional, the customers may lose trust. We've got job duties to complete, so we're getting paid for fulfilling our contractual responsibilities. We're not getting paid for sitting around gossiping. And we're paid to be professional, not to mess around. There are many stories out there where people get themselves into trouble for not being professional, be it posting things on social media about the company, uh, about customers they've maybe had as well. 
it's just not right for that business to be held accountable for somebody's actions that are not professional, which is why you need to have a professional standard when you're working in business administration. So your question there, state the importance of professionalism when working, uh, when, when delivering customer service to customers. Um, so because you're stating, you need to ensure that you write in sentences to develop that short paragraph again. So you're going to create a clear and full account. Uh, for this question, you can say what professionalism means and you can think about what might happen if you do look, act and sound professional in comparison if you don't do those things, if you don't look professional, if you don't act it, if you don't sound it. OK. So that should be the end of that PowerPoint here. So at the end of that, you should have looked at customer service, uh, a definition on how it's provided and why we need to be professional when working in offices. OK, I do apologise for not showing my face on this video. Um, I'm not really feeling very well recording this. Um, so apologies again if you can hear me sort of sniffling. It's really bad hay fever, if you're wondering. <laughs> um, but I'll see you all soon. Thank you.